Hey, hold on, say that one more time. In September of 2011, Big Meech requested CS1's help coordinating delivery of a load of cocaine to be controlled by Suarez. Shalom, and you're now locked in here. It's like talk TV when you get nothing but the raw and the real whenever I'm in front of the camera. So make sure y'all sort of pay some love, like, subscribe, and share. Shalom. And greetings and welcome back to another episode here is it like talk tv where you get the full 100 whenever i'm in the building and no pay media points now family you see the thumbnail you see the title that's right bmf kingpin big meets exposed as a top tier informant okay now the reason why we got uh big meets in the classroom today is because I have to break down and explain to you guys something that probably went over a lot of people here in regards to what Blue Da Vinci just stated on um, the Cam Capone Network, okay, in the interview that he just did. And if you guys heard at the beginning of this video, I played a little bit, uh, a little clip from uh, Cam Capone actually reading the paperwork that Blue Da Vinci gave to him, okay? Now... The reason why it's important for me to do this is because Big Meech and BMF is uh, a person and an organization that um, a lot of people look up to um, in the entertainment world, uh, more so in the uh, rap community, okay? Um, because, you know, the lifestyle that these rappers and entertainers live, you had people like BMF that was actually competing with them doing the same exact thing and they didn't have record deals they didn't have all this and that but yet they were still in the clubs doing the same stuff that we see these rappers promoting okay so they get a lot of respect on a lot of fronts because people are like okay yeah they was in there you know spending money doing this and doing that um so they get a lot of respect they also get a lot of respect in the you know in the streets in a lot of different places because you know a lot of the stuff that they put down in a lot of different territories you know around america so um, you know, they looked at in a certain particular uh, view, but now Blue Da Vinci is coming out. He's done this interview. He's dropped this paperwork uh, on Big Meech, and there's a lot of chatter in the streets. And so I want to take the time out to break down the science of what Blue Da Vinci just said, because I believe it went over a lot of people's head. Also, what he's speaking about is something that has not really been touched on uh, within these different YouTube, uh, in these on these different YouTube platforms, um, by a lot of these different bloggers, okay, because the snitching that he's talking about is on a whole nother level, and I have to break this down so you guys can understand. Because see, what people got to understand is that when you look at snitches on the low tier, right? These are the people that don't have the money to get out of jail. These are people that's probably running with people on cases with people. They know nine times out of ten. The people that they on the case with, if these are people that have money, sometimes are not going to come get them. They're going to probably sit in jail, hey, just sit in there and do this and that. And they don't want to sit in jail, so they tell to get out of jail. At the top, it, I, it works a little different because these are people that have the money to get out of jail. But see, at the top, the feds really don't want your money because they print the money. You know what I'm saying? What they want is the information. And so these people that sit at the top... They don't want to leave the million dollar lifestyles that they are accustomed to living, you know, the mansions and the things like that. So what they do is they tell to get out of trouble and to, you know, cut their sentences in half because they actually have something that they can go home to once they get out of jail. You know, they have the crib, they have the money, you know, they have the vehicles. They just got to get out of jail. You know what I'm saying? So at the time, and they don't care about telling because who do they have to worry about? A lot of the people at the on the lower tier, number one, don't have the money to touch them anyway. And nine times out of 10, a lot of these people, unless it's really, really, really personal and it's really a, a, a really a vendetta against a certain particular person, they're going to do what they always do. Oh, I'm just going to stay away from that person, man. I'm not going to deal with him. They're not saying, oh, I'm going to go get, get back or I'm going to go lay this person down. They're just going to say, we're going to stay away from this person. You know what I'm saying? And so... That person that has the money, they're not worried about it because they're going to live their best life and they not have to worry about any retribution because the people that should be doing the retribution, they just saying, well, we're just going to stay out the way. We, I'm going to stay out of his way because I know he's telling. So this is how corrupt and messed up that the game is where it doesn't even matter anymore when people say, oh, well, this person is just because nobody's going to do anything. You know, 
Nobody's going to do anything except the people that's in jail. You know what I'm saying? The people in jail, they're the only ones that's going to stand on the business. The people in the world, they're not going to stand on none because they don't want to lead these these, uh, these 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 comfortable lifestyles. Okay? So I'm getting ready to get into uh, some commentary uh, from Blue Da Vinci that he did on Camp Capone uh, Network. You can, I'm going to leave a link to the description. I mean, I'm going to leave a link to that video in the description box. I'm going to also lead a link from um, Getty Radio. You know, shout out to Getty Radio and a platform. I watched them, listen to them, um, where WAC 100 spoke on it. He said he saw the paperwork, and he basically confirmed and saying that what Blue Da Vinci is saying is authentic. It's 100. You know what I'm saying? He read it. Um, and he was kind of breaking down how, you know, a person, you know, just because somebody did 10 years don't mean they 100. So I'm going to go more in depth and explain to you because he was kind of saying, well, it's a lot of stuff going on on the case that's kind of uh, messed up. So I'm going to break all of this stuff down. So I'm going to play the, the, the first clip I'm going to play is uh, from Blue Da Vinci um, from a, a part of the a video that he did with Cam Capone. Um, before I get into this video, make sure y'all hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, turn on all bell notifications, um, share this video, get it out to the blog uh, platforms. Um, and also go follow me on Instagram, go run me up on Instagram. Okay. Cause I'm going to be going live on there too, uh, coming up soon. So now let's get into the first clip of uh, Blue Da Vinci, and then um, I'm going to come back with some commentary of my own. Okay, let's go. So I'm like, oh, yo, Mish, what's up with this, with the move, with the TV show? Like, where y'all at with that? He like, oh, man, it's almost done. The contract's almost done. It's almost done. We're going to be starting. They're going to be, you know, starting to um, cast it or whatever, whatever, right? He's like, I just got to wait to holler at Tammy before... You know what I'm saying? I know where we at with that. And Tammy is a government informant. So when he said that, I was like, Tammy, what you mean, Tammy? Like, nigga, you ain't heard what's going on with her? And they were like, shit, nigga, I heard some shit, but whatever it is, that shit ain't got shit to do with me. And he was like, man, I'm going to hit you back. And I'm like, all right, that's the last time I ever talked to him. The first, now this first little uh, excerpt that I just played uh, from Blue Da Vinci, right? He goes on and he was speaking about uh, basically the last time he talked to Big Meech and, and um, from the sounds of everything, because we got to analyze everything from all angles. Right. So it sounds like at this time now, I don't know if Blue Da Vinci had the paperwork at this time or whatever the case may be. But it sounds like he knew that this woman, this this Tammy uh, Cohen's was an informant. Right. Because he, he he tells us that he told Big Meech this on the phone. So it sounds like, and I could be wrong, and I stand to be corrected. It seems to me that uh, that Blue Da Vinci already knew this information, but he was looking to see what was going on with this uh, BMF series. Because you got to think, at the end of the day, it all boiled down to money, you know? And he was the pretty much the entertainment, the face of entertainment for BMF, Okay. So he's letting us know the, you know, part of the, the 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 dimensions of the phone calls that he having with Big Meech. And one of the things he's asking them is, hey, what about the series? And he's like, you know, everything's, you know, almost done, almost finished. Tammy, wooty wooty woo. And so Blue Da Vinci like, well, hey, you know that she's an informant or whatever the case may be. OK, so now what we don't know is that if he had the paperwork at that point in time, or it was just street chatter where somebody was like, she's a rat. Because if he had the paperwork, then he know that, um, as we're getting ready to listen to here in a minute, that in the paperwork, it tells us that uh, that Big Beach basically used old girl to set up a play, her assistants to set up a play to set some people up. So if he had that, then he already knew that Big Meech was, you know, he was hot or whatever. And he's basically was in still in this thing for the money uh, that was going to be made off the BMF uh, series in which he got axed out of. Okay. But at any rate, what he's telling us is that he basically spoke to big Meech and was like, you know, a girl is a rat and wooty wooty woo. And he was like, well, whatever she did, it has nothing to do with me. Okay. Now make a mental note of that because like I said, I'm going to really come down, come back and break this down. Right. Because, the first question that we got to ask ourselves in regards to Big Meech is that if this woman is a government informant and he's saying, well, whatever she did has nothing to do with me, 
then the first question we got to ask ourselves is why would he sign his rights over to somebody that that's a, a well-known rat, you know, that's a well-known informant that, you know, set people up and did things like this. And this is supposedly his personal assistant. You know what I'm saying? OK, so I want you guys to think about that. Now, let's play this next clip and then I'm going to come back and bust it wide open. OK, let's go. Paperwork. It says that uh, in 2009, she became an informant and she smashed somebody else, some dude named Terry White out of Atlanta. The government awarded her $50,000 because it was an open and shut case. Um, and then in 2010, she started this case, which was a pay. Well, she became a paid DEA informant for this case with me. She got over three hundred thousand dollars, bro. To do this, there's a wiretap case. Them 32 pages you looking at, it's a wiretap case, bro. It's a third party cooperation case. And we, and when she went on a visit to Meech and he told her to run this drug play and she went and hooked the feds up to it. But the, but the feds that she hooked up to it ended up being the same agent that locked us all up, special agent Jack Harvey. So now you start connecting all the dots. Oh, that's who put Meech in jail. So it's looking like Meech put him with his personal assistant slash person that he's doing all his business for him. She did the legal business for the movie shit, but she also did the dirty business for him too on the other side and got paid to do it. She wasn't in trouble. She wasn't in the feds, in jail. She's not a co-defendant or any defendant of any kind. She's just a regular working middle class, I mean, middle-aged lady. You know what I'm saying? And she did it to get that nigga out. That's what she did it for. She even said it on the stand in the paperwork. It tell you in the paperwork. She said she did it to get me out. She tried to say he didn't know or whatever or something, but it was too late. She had already told everything. She started fucking the agent and all kind of shit. Y'all just got to read it, man. She like a love story. Tap me in. So we just heard Blue Da Vinci break down what, what, what actually happened, right? Okay. So now let me break this down so you guys can understand what he's explaining to you. Now, Years ago, when I was in the feds, I got out the feds in 2011, right? Right, you know, around around the time that he's talking about, right? And there was chatter about Big Meech uh, in the federal penitentiary, you know, where, you know, you know, it's, you know how the chatter be, you know, if, if you done been down that road before about him, you know, being the police because he only got, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it was 30 years. Now, what I want you guys to understand about the feds family is that the feds, really don't care nothing about money you know what i'm saying they really too much don't care nothing about the peewees what what the feds are more concerned about are the top tier people that are the thinkers you know what i'm saying the people that are the orchestrators the people that can mobilize large groups of people these people are a threat to the government because anybody that's able to mobilize people uh large amounts of people at the you know at the snap of a finger a person like that is dangerous because they can say well you know what if, if something come up with the government if they got that much power and influence then they could turn on the government you know what i'm saying so the, the government has a big problem with that and this is why people like you know larry hoover is not going to never get out of jail because of the influence that he has it has nothing to do with all of the bogus stuff that they got him on um where they hold how they have had him locked up all these time all these years it all boils down to the influence. A person that has that much influence, the feds do not want on the streets. They want them locked up, controlled, because they can mobilize people. And this is why you saw a lot of the bigger people, the, the greats like the Malcolm X's and people like that get wiped out because these people are able to influence large amounts of people. And this is what the feds have a problem with, right? So in understanding that, the first thing that we got to start with is that if BMF has done all of this stuff that they say that they have done and people have come out and said they have done it, how in the world could a ringleader, a kingpin, the top, the, the, the top dog get only 30 years on all of this stuff that they said that they were doing? You know what I'm saying? This is the first thing that you have to add, ask yourself. Now, what Blue Da Vinci is exposing here, right? is a form of snitching that you have not heard these blogger platforms talk about. Now, we've heard the things that are about the Terrence Gangster Williams and the T.I.s where they told on dead people and, you know, things of that nature, right? Okay? We've talked about that. But third-party snitching 
is something that we have not talked about. And let me break this down so you guys can understand this. I remember years ago when I was in the feds, right? I was down in, um, when I was down in Coleman USP1, right? There was a lot of big dogs down there that had money. You know what I'm saying? Some of these people you you heard Rick Ross talking about in the Port of Miami thing he did years ago when he first came out. I was down there with some of them uh, uh with some of them guys, right? And so what happens is is that when people go to the feds, big dogs that have money, right? And they sitting in jail and they saying, you know what? I got all this money out here. All I got to do is get home. I got my girl out there. I got you know what I'm saying? Y'all y'all know how I go when you're in jail. So what they do is they use third party services. These third party services is people like their women, uh, uh, you know, or assistants like in the in the case with Big Meese, because see, what Big Meese no one understood is that he couldn't go out and say, OK, I'm going to go set this person up. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and when I'm saying it's all contingent and I'm going to say allegedly to the paperwork that Blue Da Vinci had that WAC 100 confirmed that he saw and, and he gave to Cam Capone and Cam Capone was reading. OK. So all of this is based on the notion that all of this information is correct, okay? And we saw some of this uh, um, on, on, on Vlad TV with the people that he's interviewed uh, concerning um, this woman, Tammy, being an informant, right? So what they do is they know that they can't go out and tell on people because they're too big and it's just they know it's going to be in the paperwork. You know what I'm saying? So what they do is is they use third-party services and what it is, is they will use people like they girls and they will line up plays like, OK, listen, go set this up. Let so and so know it's still on. I got this and that. And then the girl will go and uh, line the play up and set the person up. And then that person will get set up on that case. And this is how people get time knocked off, knocked down off of their cases. OK. And I know this because I was in the feds with people. That was big dogs that had done this. They had their girls out there that were setting people up. They had like, they had 70, 80 years in the phase. They were never getting out. And they took that 70, 80 years and they trimmed it all the way down to, uh, um, you know, 15, 20 years and, you know, stuff like that. You know, and, the, and, and their paperwork is not going to be hot because the case that they're on, they really did not tell on that case. But what they did is, is that at, they worked a deal with the with the with the government and said, you know what, I'm not going to do it, but I'm going to use my girl to do it or so and so to do it. So then that way that he is on that particular individual and you get the credit for it. Because you lining it up and these are, you know, might be people, you know, or whatever the case may be. But the girl is the one that set the person up. You know what I'm saying? So it get tricky at the top. And this is from what Blue Da Vinci is saying. This is what Big Meech has employed. This is how he got the 30 years or whatever, however much time he got. I believe it was 30 years. You know what I'm saying? Where he would still be able to get out of jail. You know what I'm saying? But he had to help the government. He's not the only one that has done this. But there's several people that have done this. This is what they do. This is how they keep their name out of people's paperwork. And this is how they get all of that time knocked off. You know what I'm saying? Because when you're in these federal penitentiaries and you've already been sentenced, it's no need for you to be going back to court and stuff like that. So people already know when they're going back to court, they're getting them down with departures. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I got to go back to court. You're going back to court on what? If it ain't like on the appeal or something like that. Then, you know what I'm saying, people already know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, fam, this is what's going on with this case. Big Meech used a third-party service, this assistant. And then the question we got to ask ourselves is why would he sign his rights over to the, out of all of the people he could have signed his rights over to, why would he sign it over to the informant? Because the informant was the one that went and did the work in order to get him out of jail. This is why he did that. You know what I'm saying? And then, and then, now listen to this, fam. Now check this out, right? This is how you know that the game is corrupt, right? Because 50 Cent still went along and did this contract with this woman that is a government informant that has set people up, right? You know, people talk all of this. Oh, well, this person is a civilian and this, you know, like they, they always want to move the goalposts, right? Listen, a person... That's a civilian 
is a person that's minding their business, walking up the street. They see a crime happen and the police say, hey, did you did you see what's what's you know what what's going on and you know what this case or whatever the case may be and the person say yeah it was a person had this that 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 this is the person and yeah I'm going to point this person out on the lineup that's a civilian a civilian is not somebody that's lining up a play okay that's lining up a play for uh you know what I'm saying for the for Scarface. You know what I'm saying? You coming and making a purchase, they got a wire on, they got you set up, and you make a and you and they make the play and you get busted. That's not a civilian. You know what I'm saying? That's not a civilian. This is a person that's involved. If this is his personal assistant, fam. Think about this. If this is his personal assistant, she knew that this guy has been selling drugs all of his life. You know what I'm saying? She know where this money is coming from. She know that this man didn't work no nine to five and, you know, do all of this stuff to acquire all this money. She knows that he's getting this money out the streets from selling drugs. OK, this is not no, uh, no, 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 uh, uh, no, 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 no citizen or uh, what, what, uh, no, um, no civilian, as they say. No, you know what's going on. Now, your job as an assistant is to do business on the on the front end with people like the 50 cents of the world and things like that. But on the back end, you know exactly what's going on on the back end. So this is not no civilian. This right here is what's known as the ace in the hole. Man, baby, you know, ooh, ooh, ooh. All right, you know what? This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to get you out of here. I'm going to work this. Whoopie, whoopie, woo. All right, cool. Boom. This is what's going on. So this is not no civilian. So 50 Cent, and I want you guys to understand this because if 50 Cent can do business with a rat and, 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 and do this and publish this series, then why was people crying and complaining about artists doing business with 6 ix 9 What should it matter? What should it matter? So this shows you, and and I'm not, a, and I'm not, and and I'm not rooting for six nine or uh, or see my thing. And let me explain this to you. The the problem that I have with snitches is people that have done uh, crimes and they tell on people to get out of the crime because it doesn't excuse the crime that you did. You still broke the law. It's not like you're just a civilian. You saw something and you gave information on it and say, yeah, I saw this dude breaking in the house or whatever the case may be. And you don't have any charges and you're not trying to save your tail. You just being you just you tell him you, that's a civilian. OK, a civilian is not somebody that's going out here, getting involved in crime, breaking the laws and then turn around and tell on other people to get out of the crimes they've done. This is the problem that I have with snitching. You know what I'm saying? Not the fact that somebody's telling, but the fact that you 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 broke the law just like somebody else. And because this person didn't tell, they got to do 20, 30 years. And you would have did the same 20, 30 years, but you went and told. But it doesn't take from the crime that you have done. You know what I'm saying? That's the issue that I have with snitching. You know what I'm saying? If, you, if you're not telling to say you're behind and you saw something and something happened, that's different. Because you haven't committed any crime and you're not trying to save your butt on nothing that you did. You just saw something and you know what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong. So at the end of the day, 50 Cent did business with this rat. But then when it comes to down to 6 9 and like I said, I'm using 6 9 to balance everything out because if people are going to come out and say, well, they shouldn't have did this with 6 9 he's a rat. Well, what about all these other people? Why do 50 Cent get to sit down and do business with a woman that is a known informant that has set people up? This is not no civilian. You know what I'm saying? This is a multi-talented, top-tier informant. These are people that's dangerous because these are the people that know what's going on on the back end. And then they got, the, they got this fake face in the front. They can do business in the front with people. But then they're setting people up. You know what I'm saying? These are people that's dangerous. So at the end of the day, fam... This is what's going on. Uh, J Bo, and I'm going. I'm going to play this clip. Let me play this real quick, family. I'm going to play this clip. Right, listen to this right here. Me personally, I never seen no paperwork on Blue, and prison rule: if you don't have paperwork, really don't bring this shit to me. But it's a difference when I'm the paperwork. So now, once again, the issue that I'm having with J Bo 
is that you already know what the street rules is, right? And this is the problem I got with these so-called street dudes. And this is why we got to talk about this. If you know that you need paperwork and you don't have any paperwork, you talking about you, you're not the paperwork because you cannot say that he said this, he said that, he said this, or he said that. You knowing like, okay, man, I think he telling or I, or some is not right about some. It's not actually proof that this person told on somebody, man. See, there needs to be some form of paperwork that's showing that this is what this guy said and this was his statement. They don't have that. So this is how, and this is what I'm talking about with this thing. This is how this, is how this stuff get faulty. Now, if j -Bo got the paperwork and stuff like that, then, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. But to sit on Vlad TV on some stuff that you believe is your opinion and not say, well, I, I, it's a lead, I think he did this or whatever, and you don't have the paperwork, then what, like, come on, man, that, that's just... Ah oh, man, it's just gospel. You know what I'm saying? You just sitting up here, well, I think this, and you, you know, you 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 causing confusion over stuff that you think. We don't want think, we want actual paperwork and documents on stuff. You know what I'm saying? So that right there is just fool. All that, you know what I'm saying, with what this guy said on, on Vlad TV and did is just it, it ain't nothing street about that, man. You know what I'm saying? And these guys get to sit down on Jay Springer and keep all of this confusion going. On the under some, well, I'm the paperwork. That ain't gonna fly. That's not gonna work. You know. So at the end of the day, as of right now, Blue Da Vinci, he's produced paperwork. Cam, he gave it to Cam Capone. Cam Capone read some of that paperwork. WAC 100 says that he saw the paperwork. He's confirming it. So at the end of the day, a bird in the hand beats a bird in the bush. You know what I'm saying? You can't downplay something that has been produced showing that this woman is a rat and she set people up. In order to help Big Meech. So I want you guys to leave y'all thoughts down in the comment section. What do y'all think about this case? Do BMF still get looked at uh, the same way they was being looked at with the respect that they had before? Or now, is do they fall in the line with the J Princes and all these other people of the world that have had the ability to hide behind entertainment behind the machine because you got to understand once again the the internet is not as popular i mean wasn't as popular then as it is now where we're able to reach people in these different neighborhoods at the drop of a dime you see what i'm saying and get the information that we need to get without having to worry about getting stuff through the vibe getting stuff through double xl and you know all of these platforms that we have been that we had to get it from back in the day now we could talk directly with the people involved in this stuff the people in these territories so now the truth is the truth you don't get to hide behind the entertainment business and you know the, the machine because people got access to you now so y'all leave y'all thoughts down there man is is the the, the, the do y'all believe that the Blue Da Vinci is telling the truth. Do we believe that um, Big Me should still have the same uh, 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 the same respect that he has uh, commanded and been getting over the years? Or is all of that stuff out the window? Leave your thoughts in the uh, comment section, and I'm going to continue following this case. Y'all stay safe. Enjoy your Sunday, and I'll talk to y'all soon. Shalom.